because a friend of mine who I was working with in, in, in Social Security here, oh. uh -huh. he told me, you know, there's a, there's, oh, by the way. What's the book title? Can you just like hold it up? This one here is, of course, 80. Europe, the 83rd Infantry Division. The nickname for the 83rd is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt right. Division. <coughs> this, remember I told you about Joe Medes? Yes. This is Joe Medes. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can show this. That was that, our first. That he was, was our playing the piano. That was our sergeant. He played the piano. He was a genius. I'm telling oh, you, he was oh, a genius. He, uh -huh. he could do anything, but he wanted to be an officer. And twice he went to officers training school. But he was a little plump, and he couldn't climb the, you oh, know, the, to get the, in the, there. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't pass, he couldn't pass the, uh, the required requirements physical. for physical. Uh -huh. But as smart, he was as smart as can be. And he played the piano. Oh. They, wherever they went, they used to get a piano for him to play, you uh -huh. know. He, 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 was, he was something else. He was really marvelous. So were you saying about the book, it was missing things, like that happened in your group? In our group... They never mentioned in this book that we went in. That they never mentioned that we went into uh, Langenstern. Never mentioned it, and it was the second thing that they com completely missed in there also. So I, I put away the book, uh -huh. <laughs> and I stopped reading it. I but see. then one day recently, I went back to read it, and I found out something that I believed to be true was not true. At all, from you know, you know, from this I'm, person's I'm, viewpoint. Hmm? From this person's viewpoint. No, the, the the thing that happened afterwards, that when I I thought, what happened, and I have to tell you how it happened, is that we were taken to a city, and when he came there, we we came to the city. Uh, it was a beautiful town. And it was like a lot of other cities. It was like a mile long, but it was only like one or two blocks wide. It wasn't wide, it's a little but yeah, mm -hmm. but it was but, the, but it was long. And and we went through there, and like other cities, it had a church in the middle, mm -hmm. and with a graveyard, you know, where yeah. they they buried their people and everything. So when we got to this town, we and we started walking in it. We walked to the middle, and they told us, me and Norman, set up the gun in the middle, right in front of the church. Mm -hmm. And we set the gun up, and there was some riflemen there, not from our group, you know, because uh, we didn't know who they were, but other riflemen were there, who I guess were in our area, in our outfit, but we didn't know who they were. And there was a few of them just in the back, but most of them sat in the churchyard where the, you know, the, the tombstones were. And Norman and I were up front. So we're sitting there, and we're looking out, and we see all this activity. In front of us, it's green grass. There's no, nothing in front. But in the distance, there's the trees. And we hear the trees, and we hear people in there. But we were, before that, we were sitting there, and all of a sudden, we hear a machine gun fire, and it's coming from our right. And we look down to the right, we don't see any machine guns. And we yell to a lieutenant, and I said, there's, there's something happening there. They're shooting at us. I don't see where it's coming from. A little while later, we look out there, but not to the right, but a little further out to the left, and there's machine gun fire coming. And they said, and we looked out again, they said, well, that's a tank, and it's going towards the woods. And they were shooting at us, but it was going towards the woods. So we called up and we told our lieutenant that there's a tank out there, and it's going towards the woods. Well, we just yelling. We don't know what's going on. But we're sitting there watching all this, Next thing we know, the tank turns around and starts coming towards us oh. from back. And we're the only ones back there, and a couple, and a couple of riflemen. They said, we yelled at the guy behind us, you know, to our lieutenant. There's a tank 
back there, and it's coming towards us. What do you want us to do now? Should we start running? We don't hear a thing from them. And it's getting closer. And next thing I know, an airplane comes. The only time I've ever seen an airplane. And this tank is getting closer to us. And this airplane dives down and destroys the tank. Wow. Right in front of us. And I turned around and I looked back there and I said, that's marvelous. I said, that, you know, our, our, our lieutenant called up and ordered a, an airplane to come and, and destroy the tank. I was, I believed that until a couple of months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I believed it yeah. all this time that he had know. called up and, and, and ordered a plane. And because all we could see was us and the people on the right and on our left. Well, I take out the book and I start reading it. Yeah. And I was all wrong. And for 50 years, 60 years, I was wrong. Well, what happened? This is what I found out. <laughs> huh? Yes. I, what I found out was, was that this, these, there were a lot of, air, there were a lot of airplanes. I only saw one. Uh -huh. But in the area, there were a whole bunch of airplanes. Oh, here. I wrote myself a note after I looked it up. Uh -huh. I said, March 2nd, fired on by German tanks, Air Force PTs saved us by destroying the tank. Now, in 2010, I have discovered that the planes that saved us were in the area as part of a five squadron of TPs, 14 tanks and half tracks were destroyed. I didn't see any of them. Oh, but this is the, these are uh -huh. the ones that came down and destroyed the, that airplane that uh, the, air, the, tank. The, the, the airplane came down and destroyed the tank that was almost on us. We only saw one tank, but the place was full of tanks. Either way, they saved your life. What does the difference does it make? How You're lucky. Who, who told them to? <laughs> oh, I, I, I thought it was just amazing that, that, that for, for 50 years I was wrong. I, you know, I was completely <laughs> wrong. Mind the details. I, I, I thought that I, I thought but, our but lieutenant what, had called up and, 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 and ordered the plane to yes, come out. But you never heard from the lieutenant. You kept calling him. Where was he then? They were behind us in, behind the, in the churchyard. I see. And I thought he's the one who called up on the phone <laughs> and ordered it. Well, maybe they did. I mean, they were looking at the time, you know, they were going to all these different, they were trying to eliminate all these tanks. Maybe the lieutenant said, hey, there's a tank at this coordinate because of where you It could very well have been yes, right. Yes, yes. It could so very well have been right. You may have right. assisted. But there were right. planes They there. never told us. But the planes were there is the fact that you didn't know. There were many planes there. They were looking for tanks. I only so, saw one plane. Right. But but in the next group over, yeah. look at all, the, look at all the people who were there. I came. I couldn't believe that this was a, a very big operation. action operation, right. very okay. big. Well, that's but I all know. I knew was our little uh, area. This, the, 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 you know, all, every little detail of what happened is recorded. So. Um, there's a lot of material one can find out about exactly how everything was coordinated. But, but you, you weren't told everything, you know. I wasn't, of course, I you assumed told everything. Yeah. more the right. difference right. than it was. But that when was I, I went back to this right. after all those years and I happened to read this one, this one chapter in but here. How did you feel? You, were, you, you must, I mean, you thought the tank was coming toward you. you I thought then, I was gone. Right. I really so, did. And Norm, Norman and I looked at each other and said, there ain't no place to run. They, they were behind us in the churchyard, and they were just going that way. But the, the strangest thing is when we first heard the first shots, and we looked over, there was nothing there. Be right. I, we didn't know it was on a tank. Right, going the tank to, coming, yeah. yes, yes. What country was that in? Germany. That's Germany. They were already in we're Germany. Going, going, yeah. going towards... Uh, it was in, you said it was May already, right? May? I don't know. 
Yeah, it was in May, so it was uh, close to you. You, it was, were, you it, were close to getting to to meeting the Russians who were going to get into Berlin. You remember the you remember meeting the Russians? He said. Yeah, but I met the Russians. Yeah. Well, yeah. how did that happen? Well, what happened is that when we got towards what what river is that? The Elbe, Elbe River. River Elbe. The Elbe River. Yes. We got near the Elbe River, and I have a lot of pictures taken out on the near the Elbe River there. And we got to the Elbe River, and uh, they told us we couldn't we couldn't go any further because Roosevelt had made an agreement with who was the Russian uh, and, uh, and uh, Stalin. Stalin Stalin that that uh, the Russians would be allowed to take Berlin. Right. Thank God. Because we had, we sat there listening to this for days on days, and it was terrible. They, we had, we kept it, we, where we were. We could hear the bombing of Berlin. It was uh -huh. a distance from us, but we could hear it, and and it took them a long time to win Berlin. And uh, Roosevelt made an agreement with them that he'll be he would be allowed to take uh, Berlin. Uh -huh. 